Like brings me back somewhere, sometimes. Oh, some good energy. It's just wonderful. Oh, and here too. So we have not only one, but many wonderful people here. Invisible, but wonderful. Like all of us. I wish I come back too. <laughs> can feel it all over. If they are here, they are sitting here with us now, all as of I us. I came down, I was kind of looking up at the curtains to push them aside, and just as I was pushing on them, there was this sensation, like it felt kind of, at first I felt like a hand on my left shoulder, and it was one of those, this kind of thing, where somebody's standing here, and you feel them touch you here, so you look toward the touch, and then you look because you realize they're on the other side. So I thought one of the other staff, maybe Bob, had come in. When I turned, I didn't physically see anyone there, but I just felt like there was this very tall, avuncular man, and he had his hand on my shoulder. I was a projectionist for five years almost, and there are two distinct entities up there, and they, I don't think they ever come out of there. My mom said the same thing, because she didn't think that they would leave there, they stay up there. Okay. And so when I first started projecting, I would get that, whoa, somebody's watching, you know, sensation from like behind me, and sometimes you'd feel people walk in, or hear them, and I'd look thinking it was like the janitor coming in. Yeah. And no. And they time it really well, so like, they're the next. <laughs> so you can't look away when it does that. <laughs> yeah. And you feel them right there. And it, you can't look, you know. <laughs> it's like, I know you're there, I know you're there. Ah! Okay. And then, so I finally got used to them, you know. And I would just start, you know what? Don't stand so close to me. It freaks me out, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and after I started talking to them like that, they didn't, you know. And they didn't antagonize me as much. Because they, for a while, they would do really strange stuff with, with projectors. And especially when I was brand new. I get the impression, actually, that it's almost like they're still doing it, you know, like they're still running the projectors, yeah. they're still having their shows, and we're just on a different, doing the same thing in the same space, you know? We're kind of, <laughs> kind of overlapping, Fine. and sometimes we... Okay, so ask your questions. Okay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so just describe yourself, uh, you know, you're a paranormal investigator, and you said a ghost photographer. Right. That's what I do. I'm not really concerned about whether I'm proving things to other people. My whole um, thrust in the paranormal realm is the fact that I want to do this for my own experience. And I know for a fact that there's uh, an afterlife, and I know people uh, stay earthbound because I've had experiences. Um, but my, my whole, like I said, my whole point is not uh, to convince people. I don't care whether other people believe or not. It's actually for me to have my own experience and understanding of the realm. Right, okay, that sounds good. So you definitely believe in the spiritual world and spirit presences. Right, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. I've heard things, I've seen things. Okay. I've had many personal experiences. <laughs> struck by was the various people that you have filmed, they've talked about um, how the spirit presences seemed benevolent or helpful or inspiring, that they were left with inspiration and messages about living life fully and being fully engaged with your moment and playing in life, you know, these positive messages. And that has also been my experience, is that the vast majority of times that I've received these types of messages or presences, they've been positive and helpful 
They've been benevolent and inspiring and not dangerous, not scary, not negative. And that's been true across the board. Oh,